Oprah interview with Prince Harry and Princess Meghan was shown today, March 7th, 2021. And I didn't see it. I didn't watch it. But I read some of the some of the reviews and some of the and I saw some of the snippets from the interview. And in my opinion, there was not much new that came out of this. We all saw. Well, I can't say we all saw what was happening to Meghan and Harry after the wedding because a lot of people didn't watch the wedding and a lot of people didn't follow them after the wedding to know what happened. So it was a good summary of the things that happened between the royals and Meghan Markle up to and after the wedding. Another thing I want to say about the interview is that a lot of people are saying, well, this is crazy because they left, they were angry because they wanted privacy, and that's not true in my opinion. I felt they wanted respect after the wedding, and they also wanted that the media in London stop printing so many horrific stories about Meghan continually. They were harassing her bullying her and just in her face constantly while Megan was a actress in the United States and Canada she was not used to full-on paparazzi and media coverage she had probably never expected to gain anything like this in her lifetime and if she did she would have had a full team of Hollywood type people surrounding her to help her navigate the media onslaught in this case Megan was in London she was totally unaware as to the workings of the castle and of the royal family she didn't even know that you were supposed to curtsy when you met the Queen most people on planning to undertake such a major wedding and enter into such a major family would have read one of the many 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 book available on what it's like in the castle what it's like around the Queen Unfortunately, Megan didn't read up on this, and so she had many surprises when she came to the castle, and she did not know royal protocol and was not advised clearly as to what was expected of her and what she could and could not do. I feel one of the problems that Megan encountered when she entered into this union with Prince Harry was that she still felt like an actress, and she was bringing her actress aura into the castle, which was totally inappropriate. Unlike Kate Middleton, Megan's wedding was quick. Kate Middleton dated Prince William for about 10 years, I'm told, and so she had plenty of time to meet family members, to learn how to act in the castle, how to act among royals. She became a familiar face with the royals. And so her shift from girlfriend, fiance, to wife was much more manageable. And even she, after she married William, was called horrible things by the media. I'm told that they called her a whore, a prostitute, and all kinds of things because she was not of royal blood. There is this thing in London when the family marries outside of royal blood or royalty that it creates a lot of anger because the common people are really paying for this family. And when they see another commoner entering into the royalty, it's more like they're supporting just a regular person and they don't feel that they should be supporting that person. In the United States, this would be kind of like a welfare family where the people of the country put money together and pay the bills of a welfare family. So there's always a lot of bashing that one goes through when you enter the royal family as a commoner. That is why they look so hard for Diana before Charles married her. Diana had a royal background and so she was seen as more fitting for Prince Charles to marry. She was considered a virgin. I don't know about that, but that's what they said. She was also in a profession of teaching, which was a very noble profession. So Diana really fit the bill as far as checking off all the boxes. The only problem was Prince Charles didn't have her as his first choice. She was a perfect choice as far as having a royal connection but Prince Charles did not have her as the first choice for his heart. So 
Prince Charles and Diana had a difficult marriage, which eventually ended in divorce. Later, he was able to marry the person he loved, which was Camilla. Camilla was married to somebody else, but she divorced her husband and married Prince Charles. Now, if you know the royal family, there are two things that are well known that the queen does not like. She does not like women who are divorced. She does not like minorities. So Meghan Markle coming into the family was hitting both aspects of a long-standing dislike by the queen. She was divorced and she was a minority. The queen was able to suffer through the wedding of Prince Charles and Camilla because there had been so much turbulence about Charles's divorce from Diana and her subsequent death that she was just happy to have all of the noise quieted down. And she noted that to be the Annus Horribilis, a horrible year when all of this stuff occurred. Over the years, Harry had become a third wheel to Prince William and his wife, Kate. Harry didn't have a regular girlfriend, and so he often accompanied William and Kate on various activities, and they were quite a heartwarming trio. Harry had already been having problems with his mental health concerning the death of his mother, concerning his life in the castle, and he was always considered the spare. He was never up for the job of king. So unless William died, and then all of William's children died, Harry was never going to be a king. He was always going to be a spare, somebody in line to be king if something horrible happened, but most likely never to be king. Harry knew this and accepted this, but it was hard for him to play in his life. He had to become a real person in himself, and living in the, in the castle as the spare diminished him. He was not living his full life. He was not being his best self. And you could see the change in his demeanor, in his happiness, in his confidence after he met Meghan Markle. I had never seen Harry look happier than when he strode around the palace grounds after he married Meghan Markle. So far, that was going pretty good for Harry because he now had a chance to prove himself in his own right, to seek out his own future, and to have his own family. But one thing didn't work out is that Megan did not understand the royal family. Megan came in as a rising star because of her Hollywood background. She came in and she did a great job in greeting the crowds that surrounded her and wanted to meet her. She did a great job at attending functions in the palace and greeting those people who came there. However, she was also handing out signatures the way she did it when she was an actress. And that's a no-no for the palace because Megan's signature after wedding Harry was going to be used on many legal documents and she could not have her signature floating around the country as she signed all kinds of pieces of paper that were handed to her by fans. This was just one of many things that Megan had to understand and adjust to, one of the many rules of the palace. The other thing, and I think she could have caught this by watching Kate, who had spent at this time almost 20 years in the palace, is that the women of the palace are not the main speakers. Kate always acts behind William. She never comes forward to act as the major speaker. This was different with Megan. She felt that she had a cause, the rights of women, and she had spoken previously at the UN, and she wanted to take her message to the people. 
And so often when we would see Megan at events, she would go to the podium and she would make a speech about her passionate issues, which I can understand. However, with her new role as the wife of Prince Harry, she was really meant to give a short speech, maybe a paragraph, a few cheerful words, and then feature Prince Harry. She was never meant to be the main speaker at any of these events, but that would have been pretty much against her character because as an actress, she was trained to showcase herself, put herself forward, and advance her popularity. But that is not the way of the palace. The palace is one of royal lineage, which is William and Harry. And the commoners, Kate and Meghan, unfortunately, are required to take a back seat to those who are born royal. At one event, I even saw Meghan speaking up more so than William or Harry. It was a time when they were, somebody was interviewing all four of them. And the main speaker seemed to be Megan because she is practiced at putting forth those causes she is advocating for. The others are more quiet and Megan decided to take the lead. And that was very noticeable in that interview on stage. Megan should have been a bit more demure and allowed others, mainly William and Harry, take the lead. Megan was still an unknown. She had married Harry, but no one really knew Megan. And while people may have supported her causes, most people probably did not expect to go places and get a lecture from Megan. They expected more of the usual short speeches as they had had over the years from the royal family. But Megan had taken her marriage to be more of a job and she treated it more like a job at the UN or some other place where maybe she had become an ambassador or something like that. That was really not what she was there for and it really was pushing the boundaries of royal protocol. The other thing I thought that she did wrong was when they had the trip to Africa and we saw many pictures of them interacting with uh, local peoples and dancing and so forth. At one time, an interviewer came up and asked how they were doing and Megan started complaining that she was struggling, that she felt that she wasn't living her full life and that she wanted to not, not just tolerate things, but to actually thrive. Well, this is kind of hard for people to understand when she's taking this wonderful trip in order to help people who really are struggling. And she's complaining that as the wife of Prince Harry, she is not thriving and she is struggling. Again, looking at the comparison of the two, looking at how she was living her life and had been sent on trips around the world for free as a ambassador for the country, as the wife of Prince Harry. She was complaining that she was not feeling fulfilled. It was hard, I think, for most people to understand because I think most people would have felt that if you're not feeling fulfilled and you're not thriving, this is not a time to complain while you're in the bare surroundings of an African village. There were some other things that she did that were a bit much too soon, such as organizing and publishing a book within a very short period of time. While the book was certainly great, although I haven't read it, but I've been told it's a very good book. It was another attempt at Megan to take the starring position in the royal palace. Again, Megan was not meant, never meant to be the star. She was meant to be the wife of Prince Harry. The stars are going to be Prince William, who's going to be king, and his wife, Catherine, and of course, Charles, Camilla, the queen, and Prince Philip. On top of everything else, Megan had a family that was very difficult in many ways. Her father, Thomas Markle, was very contrary and kept 
making statements that made it hard for the royal palace to produce a very nice wedding for Harry and Meghan quickly. He said negative things about the queen. He said negative things about the monarchy. He said negative things about Harry. He said in effect that he paid to have Meghan educated and he felt he should get some money in some way or another. He staged an attempt to gain media attention by sitting in front of a computer at some sort of store and looking up things about the castle, the queen, the, the monarchy. He would start going to the media to complain and he was selling stories. This created more energy for his other daughter, who was half-sister to Megan and 20 years older than Megan, because she now wanted media attention and she started selling stories to the media. She even invited the media to her house so they could watch the royal wedding in her house and she could make commentary. Recently, she wrote a book about Princess Pushy and she's been also collecting money from London media outlets for news grabbing headlines. Then she has a brother, Tom, who has problems with alcohol and a bad marriage and he created a number of headlines that were negatively impacting the image of Meghan and her family. Prince Harry has, of course, dealt with problem people in the past. His family has their own issues, but he knew not to interfere with the interfamily infighting of the Markles. He kept very quiet, and Meghan tried to include her family, but eventually had to retreat because her father kept going to the media. During the wedding, or just before the wedding, Thomas Markle even staged a fake heart attack, and I'm alleging that it is a fake heart attack because he didn't have any of the normal timelines that one would expect him to have in his present condition. He's overweight and does not look in good health and appears to be a heavy drinker, in my opinion. And I would have expected him to stay in the hospital longer if he had a real heart attack. So he, anyway, he alleged he had a heart attack and that was one of the things that made it impossible for him to go to the wedding. Then he started complaining that nobody cared about him and nobody inquired about his health or how he was doing and so forth. Frankly, I would have just called the hospital and asked them to give me a report as to what actually happened to him, if he had given permission for her to get a copy of that report. But in summary, Megan's family was just a mess and was creating more and more problems for Harry and the royal family. When Megan became pregnant, it was great news. Everybody was happy, or so it seemed, and Megan had a number of things that she wanted to do that was totally different than normal royal protocol, which I can understand because she didn't feel safe and secure in that environment and she had no control over who was around her. So she wasn't sure that she would have complete privacy and that they wouldn't be taking any horrible pictures or making any type of media proclamations, which she would find difficult to take. So she wanted to have a hospital of her choice, and she did not want to bring the baby in front of the hospital as the mothers normally do and have a photograph taken. They usually do it like right after, shortly after the baby's born, while the mother is still recovering from delivering the baby. So I can understand that too. And I thought that was unusual, but certainly okay because she did have special needs. The baby was kept kind of hidden, and I knew that they were trying to hide the baby's skin color, but there was no mention of it, of course, at that time. During this interview with Oprah, Megan did say that there had been discussions among the royal family members as to what the baby's skin color might be and some concern that he might be dark-skinned. Well, I can understand why that royal family would feel that way. The royal family is made up of a single bloodline of white people. There are no 
dark-skinned people in their DNA. So having a dark-skinned person in the DNA would change the bloodline. Plus, I was also concerned that if the baby had been born of a dark color, that he might not be treated as a royal or as a special child of Prince Harry, but he might be treated more like a servant or that kid over there or some other subordinate way, which might create anger in him over the years and make him come out as a bad seed. So I was really happy that the baby was born light-skinned and whether or not he does turn darker over the years, as often happens, at least the baby is not living in the palace right now, and that's good for him. Good for his mental health, because nobody will judge him, nobody will comment on his skin, and he will be treated equally with all other kids that he knows, and he won't have to worry about being the dark one in the family, in a family which kind of snubs its noses as dark, at dark-skinned people. During the Oprah interview, Prince Harry mentioned that he has lost all of his security from the royal family while he's in the United States. He says it was because of their leaving England. In the United States, it was explained that they could not provide security to Meghan Harry because royal security would not be allowed to carry guns in a foreign country such as Canada or the United States and they would not have the ability to do the security measures they might need to do for them because they were not citizens of the United States. And so there would be a conflict of laws which would make it impossible for security to work from England in the United States just because of the laws and they would not be granted the rights to do such a thing. It is notable, too, that Donald Trump was president during this time, and Donald Trump did not exactly support Meghan and Harry, and I doubt if he would have made any kind of concessions to having royal security in the United States. And what it means to have the right to do full security in the United States, it means that if somebody is aggressive, towards Harry or Meghan, the royal security would have the right to fight or to handcuff or incarcerate the people and have them go before court. Or if in dire circumstances, they might need to shoot somebody and maybe kill them. And that would also be something that would not be allowed in the United States by a foreign country. So I understood that reasoning as to as to why they didn't get security in the united states but it meant that they were going to have to now fund their own security which is quite expensive because there are initially two people now three and they're now expecting a baby girl that's going to be four people who are going to need full-time security that's a lot of security and a lot of money And again, you must remember that the cost of maintaining the royal family is paid by British citizens. And it was felt British money should not be taken from Britain and spent in the United States for U.S. security to protect Harry and Meghan and their children in the United States. In addition, it's notable that in England, the palace also had a huge problem with income because due to COVID-19, visitors were not allowed into the palace. And so there was a financial crisis in England also. I was surprised.